Disclaimer. This video is a product of my own research and interpretation. I can be wrong. I do not pretend to know it all. My goal is to share information with you, entertain you, and hopefully teach you something. If you know more about the topic, please feel free to correct me and share it in the comments down below. Respect and understanding go both ways and are appreciated. Enjoy! Not far from the desert, a Wednesday morning, police officers surrounded a crowd of 5,000 people, including children. Cheering, they're attending the flogging, stabbing and hanging of a 21-year-old man. What happened, you wonder? Close your door, turn your lights off, and let's get started. The Country Iran, also known as Persia, and officially the Islamic Republic of Iran, is a country in Western Asia and one of the oldest civilizations in the world, where one of the largest empires in history was founded, the Achaemenid Empire. Economically, Iran has the world's second largest gas reserve after Russia a natural resource that marked the 20th century with the efforts to nationalize the fossil fuel supply from Western companies. An attempt not welcomed by some, resulting in a coup in 1953 orchestrated by the United States of America, overthrowing the Prime Minister Mohammed Mossadegh in favor of the new Shah Mohammed Raza Pahlavi. This new Shah installed a series of reforms that he called White Revolutions in 1963, but they did not go as planned. The Iranian revolution that resulted from these reforms created the Islamic Republic in 1979. Today, Iran is an Islamic theocracy, with the ultimate authority held by Ali Khamenei since 1989. With its 82 million population, Iran is a pluralistic society with numerous ethnic, linguistic and religious groups, the largest being Persians, Azeris and Kurds. About 25 kilometers southeast from the capital Tehran lies the poverty-stricken industrial city of Pakdash. The skyline covered by a thick smoke coughed from the tall chimneys of the brickworks. So polluted, the trees are turning brown. In the factories, men, women and children work all day every day, filling the molds with mud and drying them in the sun, earning a miserable two pound for every thousand bricks they make. The work is beyond exhausting and dangerous for their health, with the dust and smoke in the air. The poverty of the region made them easy targets to all sorts of evil. Drug addiction and crime have flourished there, with the most vulnerable left to defend themselves. Because the law does not protect them. The Childhood Born in Kushan, Razavi Khorasan, in May 17, 1983, the hyena cub was part of a big family of six brothers and six half-brothers. His father, a merchant, remarried soon after his mother died from cancer when he was only four years old. A loss that seemed to have impacted him greatly, lacking the love and care of a mother that he didn't find in his father or stepmother. Oh, far from that. His barbaric father was used to beating and chaining him, going as far as almost killing him with a cane one time. At the age of 11, his family moved to Khatunabad. Once there, 
His father informed him that he would stop going to the school he enjoyed so much and start working in a furnace. Oh, that furnace, where he was raped multiple times. After these horrendous moments, he used to run to the wilderness and kill and torture animals for hours. A need for revenge that will create a need for bigger praise later on in life. A psychological report presented during the trial stated a severe lack of empathy and antisocial behavior typical of serial killers. Later on, he ended up starting working in brickworks in Pakdasht, where he met his accomplice that he coerced into helping him. His accomplice suffered from the same sort of trauma as a child. Sexually abused by his father and other men, he ended up a heroin addict, like 1.2 million other Iranians. He claims that the drug was numbing away all feeling of guilt from the acts they were doing. In a matter of two years, they installed more fear and despair in a society that was already suffering earning them the name of Hyena, or the Vampire of Terran Desert. The first, because of their choice of vulnerable prey. As for the second, it is linked to a very disturbing confession, that the sight of blood made them feel euphoric. Motives and Methods I, I suffered cruelly from childhood, and... When I compared myself with others, I had to commit such acts. Vengeance. Vengeance over a society that abandoned him. Vengeance for his stolen childhood and years of abuse. At times, claiming his motive was to free the young kids from a miserable life. Freeing them by raping and eating them. Freeing them by inflicting the same suffering certainly the most peaceful way. Their victims of choice were kids from poor Afghan and Kurd families who were potentially living there illegally and would not report to the police, fearing deportation. Luring the kids, pretending to hunt animals like rabbits, foxes, or to show them dove tricks for the poor kids who probably don't have access to food, meat, or any sort of entertainment, it was certainly a very appealing proposition. They were then killed, using drugs, poison, or simply hitting them with a rock, then raped, sometimes eaten, and finally burned or buried in shallow graves, surrounded by dead animals who were also killed in order to cover the smell of decay and rotting corpses under the burning desert sun. The Arrest On a normal sunny day, the hyena used to sit in front of his house, looking over the bricks factory. Behind it stood a football-sized depression where his favorite hunting ground stood, the slums where children were his prey. He used to think about his plan as someone would prepare a grocery list, a common occurrence, a basic task. But September 14, 2004 was different. That day, instead, he decided to go watch the children swimming in the canal, maybe to select a prey, or multiple. That day, by some obscure, unrevealed and truly miraculous reason, the police arrested him, again, but this time he was accused of the murders. Two years and 26 supposed murders later, the trial could finally start. Taking place in branch 74 of the Tehran Penal Code and there the presiding Judge Mansour the scene was truly heartbreaking. On one side, the family is hardly containing the rage, and on the other, a stone-cold hyena, 
He was completely calm and free of any remorse. He gave all the gory details on how he killed his seventh victim, confessing he would have killed 100 more if not stopped. The palpable tension quickly escalated. The family of the victim then rose from their seat and ran towards him. The other relatives of the victims began shouting and running at the accused. They wanted to kill him right then and there with their bare hands. The police quickly whisked the accused out of the court. The courtroom was a mess and the hearing was halted. After that, the trial continued behind closed doors and there was no other information shared. A little more than two months after their arrest, on November 27, 2004, after being judged in full faculty and able to stand trial, the sentence was made public. The hyena confessed to the murders of 16 boys between the age of 8 and 15 years old, as well as two adults, a change in his usual age group that was never explained. Each confession resulted in a death sentence that would be held in public on the scene of the crimes as well as 100 lashes for the rapes. A punishment he believed was not justified. I do not deserve to be sentenced to death, he said. His accomplice, on the other hand, after being sentenced to death, saw his sentence reduced to 15 years in prison and 100 lashes. Acquitted for his involvement in the murders, he was only punished for the kidnappings to which he confessed. A sentence that left the families really unsatisfied. The Execution Pakdash, an early Wednesday morning, March 16, 2005. A crowd of 5,000 people was scattered by two police cars roaming around the city with speakers, inviting them to the execution. Surrounded by barriers and armed police force, they stood cheering, impatient men, women and children, all waiting for the accused to be lifted on the improvised stage. Handcuffed to an iron pole, his shirt removed, he stood calmly, silently, ready to receive his punishment. Officials took turn administrating the 100 lashes. One, two, three. He was flogged without a scream coming out of his mouth, without a tear rolling down his cheek. He fell to his knees three times as his body could not withstand the pain. The place was trembling under the roars of the crowd and the sound of the stones thrown at him. Once the first sentence executed, he was taken away from the pole. That was without counting on an agile young boy, the brother of one of the victims, who managed to escape the police vigilance and got close enough to stab the accused in the back. He was quickly removed before causing any fatal damage to the killer. After the incident, the shirt of the accused was put back on, with a red mark seeping through, sticking to his bruised back. A blue nylon rope was prepared for the hanging and offered to the mother of one of the victims to be put around his neck. Once in place, it was attached to a hook on a crane and lifted up, 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 up about 10 meters under the applause of the crowd. You could hear the screams of the parents shouting the names of their deceased children, expressing their sorrow or trying to use this spectacle as a way to let go, to close that horrible chapter. A father screamed, turn him around, make him swing. When the crew controlling the crane answered the request, the body swung from side to side, causing both of his shoes to fall off. 
Twenty minutes passed before the body was lowered down and death was confirmed by the doctor. Twenty minutes of a slow and painful death by choking. A way of execution common in Iran that avoids the neck from breaking and like the traditional hanging methods. Twenty minutes felt by the father, Khosravi, present with his eight-year-old daughter as his happiest day, feeling like it made up for the death of his son. The execution ended with a silent promise, a promise from the crowd, a promise of revenge if the accomplice ever made it out of prison. The Aftermath The horror Pakht Ashk lived was considered the largest criminal case in Iran for the last 71 years at the time of the crimes. The police investigation was highly criticized, particularly the carelessness and interference of some police officers, resulting in 16 reprimands and a few open investigations with trials. Indeed, two policemen ignored the calls by locals asking for the inspection of murder scenes. But worst of all, the hyena was caught out of 80 suspects and kept for a few months, then released, allowing him to add seven more innocents to his body count. Even if public executions are not a common occurrence in Iran, heinous crimes that shocked the public do receive that as a punishment. The government justifies them as a way to set the example. Muhammad Nouri, an Afghan refugee and parent to one of the victims, said, Today's execution will reduce my suffering. I am satisfied with the Islamic Republic of Iran and the Iranian people. A statement that seemed to be in line with one court official who defended that decision. Look at the way the emotions of the people have calmed down. We had to hold it in public. However, not everyone agrees. Darius Mahraban said, Public hangings only promote violence. Many criminals have been hanged, but offenses have never been reduced. It's an ugly scene where a human being is hanged, even if he has committed many crimes. Revenge is not the solution. Not only it is not the solution, it doesn't seem like that punishment was agreed upon by all the families concerned. Even if four families have accepted the blood money instead of death penalty as a fair judgment, it seems like the Afghan mother, Fozal Shemsi, didn't receive the same right of choice. We had to sell all our things while we spent eight or nine months searching for my son. We have lost everything and my husband has a bad back, making it hard for him to work. We would have preferred some money. Why didn't she have the same right to choose for blood money or death penalty? Whether that public show was a way to redeem the mistakes of the police officers, a way to cover up a potential bigger case of kids trafficking, or a way to cover up the inequalities in situation of that region and those refugees, no one will ever know. Since the execution, the family of the hyena had to move from their three-bedroom home. Angry neighbors broke the windows and chased them from there. As for the brickworks, it was stopped, and the owners is in prison for some unknown charges connected to the case. I wonder what happened to those families, to that society living in the utmost darkness, sickness and poverty. A message and a question. He used to walk by here and drink water from our tap, said one of the women who lived on the hyena's hunting ground. Sometimes we saw him carrying sacks, but we never imagined there was anything bad happening. Appearances might not be what they seem. Keep an eye open. Always. 
One of the parents during the trial stated, we are ready to pay the judiciary as much as they want so they can hand them over to us and we can deal with them. Can you understand the need for vengeance? What did you think of his execution? Until next time, stay safe. Let's take a moment for the victims. Kaivan Khosravi and his two friends, the son of Muhammad Nouri, Nematullah Shamsi, Rahim Yunessi, son of Milad Khani, and all the other unnamed ones. A moment of silence.